December 14th, 2012. The morning started like any other. Producers hashing out the last minute details for the weekend broadcast. The focus was going to be the fiscal cliff and a segment on working mothers making it to the top. The show was almost ready, but in one hour, everything changed. This was the last week of my internship at Weekends on All Things Considered at NPR. It was also my first exposure to working through the news in the midst of a human tragedy. This was the day of the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in Newtown, Connecticut. Almost as if it were slow motion, I watched everyone around me spring into action, realizing that the show we'd have to broadcast would be very different and much more difficult than the one we had planned. It normally takes about a week to produce the show. My colleagues had less than a day. But the need to put together a new show quickly was tempered by the question, how do we present the most accurate information to our audience? How do we ask and answer tough questions with care and with respect? For me, it marked a loss of journalistic innocence, but a gain in understanding what kind of responsibility is necessary when relaying emotionally difficult news to the world. It also marked a fusion of AU academics with real world experience, something that makes our school so unique. As communication students, we've been taught in the classroom and trained in the real world. We've gone from spending hours carefully crafting campaign messages and staying up late editing projects to near perfection in the Media Production Center, and then going out into the city to put those skills to practice. And we've done so with the support of an amazing faculty and staff who have always been in our corner. Take Professor Talon, who I know is somewhere here. <laughs> He invites every single one of his students to office hours so that by the end of freshman year, we all already feel like we have a special bond with him, and we do. Uh, or Professor Chatou, right in the front row, who had the guts <laughs> to hand non-film students cameras, quite expensive cameras, <laughs> I might add, uh, to non-film students and teach them how to shoot film that serves strategic purposes or Professor Lehrman, who took a kid terrified of public speaking and gave her the confidence to give a commencement speech. <laughs> and of course, there's the group who has supported us the longest, and that's the people who we love and who love us. And since I have a microphone, I take a moment of personal privilege to thank my parents, Brinkley and Diane. We've all had someone who's supported us these four years, and this moment belongs to them as much as to us. So let's give them all a round of applause. It's because of all these people that we now have the skills we need, the opportunities that demand them, and the confidence to go out and use them. Last summer, I worked as a reporter for my hometown newspaper. I was assigned to cover a story about a fundraiser for Ian, a 10-year-old boy fighting brain cancer. I called to get a quote from his father. And instead of talking to me on the phone, he asked to speak with me in person. And I will never forget the feeling of being invited into his home, you know, seeing toys on the ground and family photos on the fridge and bills on the counter, and listening to him and his son talk about their journey through Ian's chemo. When the day came, I went to the fundraiser, and in typical small town fashion, word had spread that I was the gal who wrote the article. People started coming up to me and thanking me, saying it was the best thing they'd ever read. Um, I have no delusions. This was not the best thing they ever read. This was a fairly standard eight inch article. It was nothing unique, special, or brave. But I realized for them, the article was a way forward, and most importantly, it was their story. They took a chance in sharing it. In our status updating, tweeting, Instagramming world, we sometimes forget that there are some things that are truly difficult to share. But the gratitude shown to me that day was because someone did share, and it made a difference. 
Whether in a newsroom, a classroom, or back in my small town, these four years have shown me the importance of responsible and careful storytelling. From here on out, our job is to go and find stories to share as PR professionals, as journalists, as filmmakers. And from here on out, people will be taking chances on us to share their stories in the hope that we all make a difference. We'll work hard to get the shot, the message, the story just right, because that's what we've learned to do here at AU. I look forward to seeing the incredible stories we share in the years ahead. Good luck, guys.